Today, we're going to talk about drizzling your images and how drizzling combined with deconvolution algorithms such as Blur Exterminator can truly improve your images dramatically. The whole video concept and even the methodologies that I will show in the video, they come from one of my Patreon supporters, uh, David Huff, Dave Huff, amazing guy. And uh, please let him know in the comment to thank him because he's done amazing work. Also, Russ Croman, the creator of the Blur Exterminator AI-powered deconvolution algorithm, has made an amazing video and also an amazing tool recently. Uh, I'll put the link down in the description as well. It's amazing. It's long, please watch it. It's a great presentation and it covers to some extent this topic as well. So first, let me go a little bit into what is drizzling. Drizzling, if you haven't used it uh, before, is a way that you can increase the resolution of your images to hopefully get a bit more details. There's a lot of conditions before you can apply some drizzling and I'll go into those in a moment. Before that, I want to give you a concrete example of uh, a, the same stack of images, the same capture. One was stacked by PixInsight without drizzling, and the other was stacked with a two-time drizzle algorithm. And two times drizzling basically means that you're increasing the resolution by two, so you get four times more pixels in your final image. So on my screen right now, the image on the left is the non-drizzled image, the image that you get at the end of your stacking process if you don't do drizzling. The image on the right has the two times drizzling. And the image on the right maybe looks slightly less blurry. There's a bit more details, like I think you can see those three dots next to this uh, curve here better than here. It's less blurry. The stars are also much less blocky, right? This You can see the, the individual pixels here, but not so much here. The stars look much smoother. So uh, there are definitely some advantages. There's also, also a bit more contrast here. So there's definitely some more some advantages to drizzling. At the same time, you can see that this noise outside of the galaxy here, it also looks more visible. It looks sharper than the noise on the non-drizzled image, which looks more blurred out. And this really means that you've, by drizzling, you've decreased your signal to noise ratio, but there are ways to recover that. Still, the difference between the non-drizzled image and the drizzled image are not that dramatic in my opinion, especially once you start zooming out. And so that's why historically I haven't bothered with drizzling uh, because I saw it didn't really make a big difference for me. Although in this particular image, which was taken by the way with my Hyperstar C6 with a focal length of 300 millimeters and a pixel size on my camera sensor of 3.76 microns, this matters because it means my image was undersampled by a lot. So drizzling does make a little bit of a difference. But where your drizzle data will truly shine is when you apply a deconvolution algorithm such as the Blur Exterminator process by Russ Chrome. Blur Exterminator is a process that is dedicated to PixInsight. I've featured it on the channel in the past. It is a paid process. I think it's around $100. It's not cheap, but it is worth every penny, in my opinion, uh, because it truly helps your images. So this is Blur Exterminator with the default settings. And I'm going to try applying it to the two images. This will perform an AI-powered deconvolution, but overall, it's still a standard mathematical deconvolution operation. It's not trying to invent new details, such as uh, something like a topaz de noise can sometimes do by imagining details that doesn't that don't exist really but it will try to increase the contrast of details that actually already exist in the image that are not quite visible to us because there's been a contrast loss so this is the result with blur exterminator this deconvolution algorithm uh, done on both images the image on the left is the non-drizzled image. The image on the right has drizzling. And we can see the difference between the two are amazing. First, let's look at the difference before and after on the non-drizzled image. The difference is already quite amazing. We get so much more details within the galaxy. 
I find this, this is already amazing. But let's look at the right hand side image. And I think the difference is even more striking. So this is before, this is after. There's so much more details and the details are also very smooth, especially compared to the image on the right. You can see the core of the galaxy, this little arc here, it's almost invisible in the other image. You can see the arc and dot features on this galaxy arm here. They're much more detailed than on the, on the image on the left. Even the details in the child galaxy here, those dark uh, bands, they have more details on the drizzled image than they do on the non-drizzled image. And we got this for free. This is the same set of data. And I'll go into hard as possible. And what are the conditions to accomplish this again in a moment? Now, the one thing where the drizzled image doesn't work well is the noise in the background. Just like before, the noise in the background is very crisp, very visible compared to the noise on the image on the left, the non drizzled image. How can we fix that? Simple, we can resample the image on the right, basically lower the resolution of the image on the right. This will average out multiple pixels together and this increases the signal to noise ratio. It's just, it's basically like binning in CMOS cameras. To do that in PixInsight, you can use the resample process here and just put like 50% as the target and apply it. Or you can use the integer resample process here where you can just say that you want to resample, downsample by two. Uh, now, I'm not sure exactly of how differently the, the two processes, one with 50% with and one downsample by a factor of two will be different if there is any difference. If you know, please let me know down in the comments. Uh, while you're at it, you can like the video. You can also subscribe to the channel, join the channel, or, subscribe, uh, or even join my Patreon again. Links all down below, you guys all make my videos and the channel possible. Thank you so much. Anyway, let's apply the resampling. And so now I have applied the resample. So we have the same resolution in the image on the left and the image on the right. And yet, even though we have the same resolution and the data was the same, we come from the same stack, I can't help but see that the image on the right still has more details and more contrast. I can see more detail in the galaxy arm here. I can still see the galaxy core details far better than on the image on the left. I can see like the contrast in those dots here are there more. And I see more details on the image on the right than on the image on the left. Same for this dark nebulosity here, even though we have the same resolution. And at the same time, the noise on the image on the right is now much less crisp. We get a better signal to noise ratio. And this again is from the same set of data. I find this absolutely amazing. This improvement comes for free. Even if you have like past data that meets the requirements for drizzling, you'll be able to use it. So what are the requirements to use this drizzling process. One of the requirements is your image needs to be undersampled. Um, I will not go in this video into details of undersampling versus oversampling, but long short story short, if you're using a small refractor like the Red Cat, or you're using like the same setup as I do the uh, Hyperstar C6 with like the standard CMOS cameras that are available these days, chances are you're undersampled. And undersampling just means that you are not capturing as much details as you could for your condition. And this is all linked to your resolution per pixel. Again, I will not go into the details. Uh, there is a tool by Russ Croman, the same guy who made the Blur Exterminator plugin that is available online and for free, where you can discover more about your system and whether it is oversampled, sampled just right, or undersampled. I'll put the links down in the description. Uh, by the way, if you're oversampled, you can still use drizzle. It's just you will not get any advantage out of it. Uh, so if you're oversampled, you don't need to. You you already have like all of the resolution available to you. Okay, so that's one condition. The second condition is you want to be dithering between your frames well and often. So if you're not familiar with dithering, dithering is between two subframes. Let's say I'm taking one minute 
sub-exposures throughout the night. Between each of those one minute sub-exposures, I can tell my mount to have to bump a little bit, to change position a slight bit. So let's say if you have a star that was perfectly centered in one frame, in the next frame, it might have been moved like 20, 20 pixels in one direction. And then the next frame, it will be moved like 20, 20 pixels in yet another direction. And that, that is dithering. You're just bumping your scope a little bit between frames. And this is done by your capture software. I have a video on the topic, by the way. I'll put the link up above and also in the description. One of the advantages of dithering is that you can get rid of fixed pattern noise. And even bad dithers that are done not very often can help with that. And this is what historically I've been doing. But if you want to drizzle, you want to do more. You want to dither by fractional pixel values, you want to drizzle by enough pixels, and you want to drizzle often. So what exactly does that mean? Well, I'm showing you now my Nina screen. This is actually on my Newtonian telescope rather than on the hyperstall telescope whose image I featured earlier. And uh, you can see that I'm under the guider tab of the equipment tab. So I have connected PHD2, which is my guiding program. And you can see that I, I can set my dither pixels here. This is the amount of pixels that I will move stars by when I dither. So that little bump to the mouse. This is on the guide scope. Your guide scope with guide camera will move by seven pixels. But you can see the impact that it has on your main camera here, your camera dither pixels, and it tells me 23.26 pixels. This is actually pretty good because I'm dithering by 20 pixels, which is a good distance. This is decent for my uh, sensor. And at the same time, I'm dithering by a fractional amount. I'm not dithering by just like 20 pixels. For instance, if I set my dither pixels to six here, I'm now at 19.94, which is too close to a full pixel in my uh, view. So I'm choosing seven pixels. And according to David, uh, 20 pixels in his experience has been working pretty well. So for me, 23.26 will work quite well as well. So that's how you can set your dithering. You also want to make sure that you dither often because I've been imaging and doing dithering to avoid just a fixed pattern noise, I was dithering every 10 minutes. And even though I was taking like one minute or even 30 second long exposures, and that's not enough. Uh, Russ Crowman apparently dithers every frame. Uh, if you have very short frames, that's going to be uh, too much. But I'll try probably in the future to dither every two or three minutes, even when I'm taking like 30 seconds frames. And hopefully this will help me get better results with my drizzling algorithm. The uh, sample, the example that I gave earlier in the video, I was dithering by only around 10 pixels with a bit of a fraction. And I was dithering every 10 frames, which is really not enough. But even then, I got such better results. But ideally, you want to do more because you can run into other issues if you're using one-shot color cameras, which is what I'm using. So dither well and often. Okay, now that we have the conditions put together under sampled data that was dithered well and that was dithered often, we're able to apply the drizzle. How do we do that in PixInsight? Well, we can do that as part of the weighted batch pre-processing process that we already use uh, when we're just stacking our images. So we can do it in one run. And here it is, uh, script batch processing, weighted batch pre-processing. And uh, if you have like a monochrome camera, and if you have, or you have an OSC camera, you can run the drizzling, although things in the background mathematically are a bit more complex for your color camera because of the Bayer matrix that's on top of your pixels. But PixInsight will just take care of it. Although it is, again, especially if you have an OSC camera, very important to dither well. Otherwise, you might get some weird grid patterns in your image after drizzling. It's not quite pleasant. So back to the weighted batch pre-processing script. Once you've put your light frames, your flat frames, your bias frames, and your darks, if you have uh, darks, you can go to the calibration tab, click on your light frames. Now here, you can just set your debayer method to the default, which is VNG. Or if you have a monochrome sensor, you want to just uncheck CFA image. Okay, now what we want to do is go into the 
post calibration tab. And to do a drizzle by a factor of two, you want to go to the drizzle configuration here and click on enable. You can set your scale to two and a good compromise drop shrink value here is 0.9. The more you've dithered and the better the dithers were, theoretically you can lower that value to get more contrast. Uh, so you can play with that, but 0.9 seems to be a, a good starting point. And this is the value that David uh, provided me. All of the rest stays the same. And then you can just run the process as usual. In terms of files, you will end up with things like this, drizzle two times, uh, and the autocrop, autocrop version of that. Perfect. That works great. And you know, there's room for experimentation. There is no single truth in here. It's all up to you guys and how you want to uh, try those methods out. But what I do know is that now with easy deconvolution methods like Blur Exterminator, it becomes really advantageous to do drizzling and therefore it becomes really important to do good dithering and dithering often, even if that means you are going to sacrifice some imaging time to dithering. What is the best balance? I have no idea. So it's up to us to test and see how well it works. Let me know and let everyone know in the comments what you think about that. And I hope this was an interesting video that you learned something. I want to thank David again so much for his advice and method. Russ Croman for really advanced for making those amazing tools. Uh, again, links all in the description. And you know, leave a comment, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and you could join the channel, join my Patreon to support me even more. It's truly appreciated, makes the channel possible, etc. But more than that, don't forget whenever you can to look up at the stars and drizzle the stars. And I'll see you next time.